Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandan and welcome to the Media Club. So you must have observed that I am not posting videos from last several weeks. I had my own reasons, I don't want to get into those uh, reasons. Basically I didn't get time, uh, so I am just struggling to find some free time. So but uh, whenever I get time, probably I will be doing it uh, in the future. I wanted to post uh, videos consistently. But still, uh, I had to manage with my uh, personal and official uh, workload as well. So, uh, I wish that I uh, would make more videos in the upcoming days. So, as for uh, as uh, uh, today's video is concerned that uh, we, were, we are going to discuss about what is actually uh, a piping uh, design engineer uh, has to do apart from uh, just uh, uh, preparing the 3D model or uh, uh, preparing the routing. So what is the primary uh, thing that a piping design engineer has to do? So that is what we are going to discuss about this uh, in this video. Because uh, most of us do not know that uh, apart from routing and apart from just uh, uh, preparing the drawings, what else we have to do? Because that's one of the primary area and primary skill set that a piping design engineer has to develop over a period of time. So here I would like to talk about uh, three levels of reviews that a piping design engineer should learn and should improve their uh, skills on those three areas. So that would uh, essentially uh, help them to build their uh, strong career and also it would help uh, you to address your uh, uh, the, your knowledge, your potential and to get more recognition in the company that you are working, wherever you are working. So basically uh, these areas are going to be, uh, I am going to divide these areas into uh, several stages actually. The first stage I would like to talk about is whenever you prepare a design uh, as a pipeline design engineer, what we have to do is that self review. Self review is basically upon human factor engineering. So what is that all about? The human factor engineering is about uh, whether your design complies with the constructability requirement, operability requirement, accessibility requirement and maintenance requirement. So basically uh, it should uh, ease the operation, maintenance, access and construction. So the review in the sense that when you prefer a design, uh, piping design engineers has to uh, give a thought on that aspect whether your design meets these requirements or not actually. Most of the time what happens is that when we uh, uh, get more involved in, in our work and we may not be able to observe few things actually. But regardless of uh, whatever uh, the time or in the busy schedule or whatever be it, we have to have this review done. Otherwise, uh, some or other stage uh, it will be caught either by a client or somebody who is above you actually. So when you develop this kind of a review systems in your design, the first of all you are ensuring that your design is in a safe condition, which means that you are meeting all the necessary requirements. So that is the first level of uh, uh, review that have to, that you have to do. So basically, it is about the reviewing the human factor engineering, which is nothing but constructability, operability, accessibility, and maintenance uh, uh, to ease maintenance uh, activities. So now the, what is the second actually? The second stage that I would like to uh, tell you is that whether you are complying with the internal standards. So internal standards could be uh, many. Uh, if you are working directly as a client, you will have uh, internal uh, standards that are pertaining to that specific clients actually. But if you are working as a consultant, you may be working with uh, different clients actually. So whenever you work with a, a particular client, you have to follow their own standard. If you are working with multiple uh, clients, then the respective project has to meet their own internal standards. So basically, uh, like if you are developing a piping layout, individual clients may have uh, specifications for uh, piping standards. I mean standards for piping standards where they would have listed out certain requirements in such a way that you have to uh, develop your piping layout. So, uh, the, I, I mean that uh, you will have uh, standards for uh, supports, uh, standards for stress analysis, standards for plot plans, standards for 
preparing the drawings and naming the drawings and what kind of uh, uh, tagging that you have to give and the necessary requirements will uh, all will be addressed in the internal standards. So we have to comply with this uh, standard requirements. So most of the time what happens is that the people go, I mean uh, we as an engineer go with our intuition, with our uh, practices but some cases uh, general engineering practices may not be uh, applicable because some clients will have standards which are more stringent than the general practice. So it is necessary uh, when you work with certain clients you have to refer the internal stand standards. I mean uh, internal standards could be many. It is not only about the piping layout or uh, not only about the supports. There could be many standards actually. So you have to I mean as a piping design engineer as a way forward to improve uh, your career uh, to become a better piping design engineer, this is what we have to do. With. Most of the time, what we uh, engage ourselves with uh, in developing a routing, in developing a small, small things, but we don't uh, check the very important uh, part of engineering, which is the internal standard. So, the second stage is that you have to comply your design with the internal standards, whether you're working with a client or you as a client. So, whatever be it. We have to make sure that it meets the particular standard that the client are following. So, the, what is the third one? The third stage I would like to talk about is the interdisciplinary checks. So, what does it mean by interdisciplinary checks actually? So, basically when you are developing a design, this has to be reviewed by other disciplines. This is known as interdisciplinary checks. So, uh, mainly uh, when we talk about piping, uh, the piping has to be reviewed by the process and civil and instrumentation and electrical engineering team also. And moreover, it also has to be reviewed by the process safety engineer. You know, I'll tell you the reason why it is. See, the piping has supports and supports are placed uh, over the ground. And if you are placing your support on the underground cable tray, what would happen? You may not know until it it's being gets uh, reviewed from the respective engineer. Say for an example, when you develop uh, a drawing and it has to go for a multiple reviews with the different disciplines. Instrument engineer would review in terms of clashes with underground cable trees. Electrical engineers would review in terms of clashes with underground electrical cable trees. And there are many actually, not only about the cables. And there are about underground lines. You as a piping designer have to uh, check whether your line is, uh, I mean, uh, uh, clashing with the underground cable trees or any underground foundation. Uh, if you are giving a support information to the civil, civil would certainly review whether your supports are clashing with other supports or uh, was there any overlap between the supports. So these are the adequacy checks that we have to do. So, in order to do this, we have to systematically review, get this review done. Systematically in the sense, first you have to get it reviewed by one particular discipline and then it will go to a next one and then it will go to a next one. Most of the companies have their own system uh, of, uh, I mean, they will have their uh, portal where or software where all the disciplines can review the documents at the same time. So, that is essentially to capture the comments of other disciplines. So these are the three important reviews that as a piping design engineer we have to do it. It is not uh, about the activity that we are doing, it is about the skill, it is about the uh, engineering that we have to do. Because when you always bring a third person into the picture, so you will be able to address the many small things that you were not able to uh, observe when you are preparing your design. So let me repeat the three important areas where you have to develop as a piping design engineer, the first one is that you have to do a human engineering, I mean uh, human factor engineering reviews. Basically these are known as self reviews actually. So in technically we can call it as a human factor engineering. And the second review that you have to ensure that your design complies with internal standards whether you are working with uh, one client or multiple client, whatever design you are preparing it has to comply with the standards of the respective client. And the third stage is that interdisciplinary reviews actually. More importantly, as a piping design engineer, we must understand the importance of these three stages. See, it happens that during the heat of the project, you may miss out, you may uh, give a very less importance for these uh, stages. But these stages 
would capture the the would avoid uh, the blunders that we are making in the design actually so the blunders are ha- what do you call bound to happen because we are all humans and though we use multiple softwares so there are that could be chances of mistakes and errors but if you involve multiple reviews with different teams different standards so we in different levels uh, though we call in piping that even if in, uh, uh, inside the piping i mean within piping team we have multiple reviews uh, right so probably uh, according to me like whatever engineering experience that i have actually so uh, within the piping team there will be uh, uh, one check that is done by the designer levels and the second check that is done by the engineer level then that will be that will be another check done by the principal designers and principal engineers and the fourth checks are done by the seniors i mean uh, your uh, senior engineers or uh, the principal engineers so even within piping we have multiple checks but other than all these checks we also have to do the kind of three engineering stages that i have told you in this video i hope this will help you to improve your skills as a piping design engineer i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandra